All right. So as we're continuing our base color layer, I really just need to get the rest of this filled in. And I'm spending maybe a little bit more time than I need to picking interesting colors. But I'm hoping that will pay off in the end. Come on, there we go. Because this is the foundational color. These are the colors that everything I put on top of them will mix with. And they're a way for me to explore my different stylistic references too. Ah, I did something that students always do, and I tell them not to. So when I did the standard portrait, I accidentally painted a lot on the face on my standard Roman portrait one. So when you notice that kind of thing, this is why it's important to lock the layers you're not, that you don't want to paint on. I'm just going to select all of that. I'm going to duplicate it onto its own layer. And then I'm going to merge that with my base painting layer so it's all the same and notice order matters what's on top of what there we go and then i'll delete it all from that roman portrait layer and then i'm going to make sure to 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 keep my layers locked except for the one i'm painting on Now, obviously, black robes are not as interesting as other parts of the portrait. But I still want to give them some variation, some visual interest. And because you can steal colors from your own painting as easily as you can steal them from reference images, you might as well give yourself a nice variety within these kind of open tones that are dark, right? So I might want some maroons in there. To work with. As her shoulder catches the light. Frame in her jaw here. And remember, I'm not worrying about glasses until I pretty much finished her without glasses. Because that's a handmade accessory. It has to sit on top of everything else. I can hint at texture in my base color, but I'm not, I don't have to commit much to it.
I like to use warm colors, especially reds, any place where the blood is going to be kind of flowing, like around the eyes, around the lips. It's a nice way of kind of bringing visual attention to certain areas. And then I'm constantly squinting as well. That helps kind of show you the values you have, even when the colors are crazy. And where you might need some darks. Or you might need some highlights or midtones to separate things out. I think I'm going to opt for her not showing her teeth because that's just a whole other level of detail. But I can change her expression to anything I want just by playing with the corners of her mouth. So I'll just upturn them a little bit. Even right from this step, I can start to have an impact on it. twinkle in her eye all right so now the thing that she's often remembered for on the court just fashion wise was these lace additions to her her court appointed uniform and of course I have to figure out a way to do that lace without having to meticulously do every detail but I do want it to stand out. Parts of it are going to be stronger than others. So I can start that just with the base color and getting some variation in tones that then I can work with later. So I'm kind of building my own palette here. When I can start, this is called hatching, when you just do kind of linear strokes, kind of directional strokes, and I'm cross-hatching, layering them over each other. Start to build a little bit of structure and variation. That's why the tablet's so nice, because you can do that all fairly quickly. Just like in real painting, the more layers you have, the more interesting your paint surface will be. Okay, so now I'm going to be finishing up with this layer. And I never use the eraser, I just use different colors. They're replacing each other. 
and I want to give her hair coming out the back. It's in a tight bun here, but I like in some of the AI reference, it shows her hair down. So I like the kind of mixture of the two. So I'm going to have some, some strands of hair coming out the back. Maybe even coming around a little. Well, no, that's too much. This is where you can deviate from your reference and just do what you like. Okay, now if that's my base color, I'll label it that. Save my work. Now I want to find a background color. I'm going to duplicate it that I think complements that. So I'm going to choose a background color and say edit fill with that color. Right? And that shows me the areas I still haven't filled in on my base color. Surprisingly, her cheekbones and stuff. You think I would have noticed that. And it gives me an opportunity. Now that I'm reacting to this background color, gives me an opportunity to kind of warm it up or to see what kind of tones I would like. Yeah, that helps. All right, so now what's interesting is I like the gray behind my base painting better than this color. So if that's the case, this is a nice little trick. I go to my base color layer, I use my magic wand, I select the empty space around it, and then I say select inverse. So I'm actually selecting this, right? Then I'm going to duplicate that from my gray layer, because I like how that looks behind my base color, like that. So this is without it, right? And this is with blue. And now I'm just going to merge those two together. So now this is all one layer, my base painting. All right. Now I'm going to work on this bluish background, lock the layers I don't want to end up painting on. And I'm going to lock my base painting layer. But first, I might make a duplicate, duplicate of it and play with it a little bit. And this is what I mean. You can do this at the sketch stage, but I find it's helpful to do it here. Make a duplicate and then do Option-Command-T and then warp it. And I'm just looking at the reference. And I'm thinking, when I painted it, I think I squeezed th this eye a little bit. So I'm going to widen up that eye, open up that eye a little bit, tuck this in a bit. I'm just kind of like I've rolled out the dough. And now I'm just kind of pushing it with my fingers to make it the shape I want in little places. 